How do you think an Obama administration in the next four years would differ from a Romney administration and how it deals with those problems. Well, the choice for me is just incredibly stark, and the country really is at a fork in the roads, and this election is so important. So what the president firmly believes, what I firmly believe, is that education is an investment, and it's the best investment we can make in tough economic times. Does Mr. Romney believe the same thing? Well, I think what we've seen is Congress and Ryan's budget, which passed the House, would, would decimate uh, much of education. How? On the early childhood side, as many as 200,000 and fewer children would have access to Head Start. We need a lot more babies entering kindergarten ready to learn and ready to read, not less. It could have potentially devastating cuts for Title I, which is money for poor children, money for disabilities, and children with disabilities. And then on the higher ed things, uh, higher ed side, one of the, the accomplishments I'm most proud of is we've gone from 6 million Pell recipients, Pell grants, to almost 10 million more than a 50% increase in young people having access to college, many first-generation college goers. The Romney-Ryan uh, budget plans in, the, in that budget that passed the House could see a huge cut, a huge reduction in the number of students having access to Pell Grants. We need a more educated uh, a populace. We need a more educated workforce, not a less educated one. So I think that the contrast here is very, very clear. At the same time, you've got more and more young people graduating with enormous debt from college despite the availability of Pell Grants loans. Of course, Governor Romney said, go to your parents go, if go, you go, need Go help. borrow from your parents. Exactly. Go borrow from your parents. But, you know, maybe that's the only way for a lot of people. Well, I don't think that is the only way, and a lot of young people don't have parents they can go borrow from, as you and I so well know. So that debt in the back end is a real concern. I always talk about shared responsibility. So we've put in place something called income-based repayment, pay as you earn, so your loan repayments are reduced based upon your income. If you make more, you pay more. If you make less, you pay less. Suppose you're making nothing. Suppose yeah. you graduate from college, you it, don't yeah. have a job. So there, there are plans to help you through those tough times until you get a job. But then after 10 years of public service, Diane, 10 years of teaching, 10 years of working in a nonprofit or for the government, if you're in good standing, all those debts are forgiven. This is a huge step in the right direction. We want to bring that great talent into teaching, into the public sector. It's a big opportunity that didn't exist. But we need to continue to reduce those debt challenges at the back end. There are an awful lot of people who believe that the administration of President Obama is overreaching when it comes to state-led reforms. How do you regard that? It's just quite the opposite. In fact, what we've seen, for example, No Child Left Behind, I, fu I think, is fundamentally broken. And I lived on the other side of the law for seven and a half years when I ran Chicago Public Schools. No Child Left Behind was far too punitive, many, many ways to fail, no rewards for success, very prescriptive, top-down from, from Washington, led to a dumbing down of standards, led to a narrowing of the curriculum. All these things are bad. We want a Congress to fix the law and fix it in a bipartisan way. Unfortunately, Congress is pretty broken these days as well. So what we did is we offered flexibility. We offered waivers to states. So where states could develop their own plan, hold themselves accountable to a high bar, we gave them a lot more room to move. So rather than dictating from Washington, states now are empowered to challenge themselves to make sure every single student is graduating college and career ready, challenging themselves to reduce dropout rates and increase graduation rates. But this is the the opposite of an overreach. This is really empowering states to say, you know what's best for your children. You figure out how to get there. We'll hold you accountable to a high bar, but give you a lot of room to move and to innovate at the state and at the local level.